spelling out the word two in a movie title. You think you're too good for numerals movie? If it was good enough for Terminator, it's good enough for you. Letting some kid break the fourth wall in the first minute of the movie. Now I have to decide if there's some sort of playground documentary being shot here or if the filmmakers just don't give a shit. Let's just say I'm leaning pretty strongly towards one of those choices specifically. Whoa. Even if I did think pratfalls were the pinnacle of humor, I still wouldn't be laughing at this because I'm too distracted by that tetherball rope almost doubling in length to reach Farrell's face on that kid's weak ass return. The editing shenanigans don't end there as it's clear the kid in the shorts is attempting to jump return an invisible ball to him as well. A scarf this long is just asking for a kid to snag it on a door handle and bang their face into a locker, causing them to lose three front teeth, and then Denise won't go with them to the spring dance because your whistle doesn't work anymore. <laughs> See what you missed out on, Denise? Who's sorry now? These look great. Using child labor to produce your shitty programs. I wish we like Adriana's. Uh, no. No, 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 honey, we're not doing that, okay? Put it back in, look like a nice kid. Appearance-based character judgments. I promise if the movie takes it back, so will I. <laughs> sorry, just the thought of a world where this movie cares about its messaging. Hilarious stuff. Then we had some with no daddy at all. Then Brad came, but he's always trying way too hard and making everyone feel uncomfortable. Merry f***ing Christmas, parents. We let your kids write whatever they wanted and didn't bother to proofread it or edit it. Enjoy the brutal honesty we've decided to make part of our annual Christmas pageant. Also, this blatant first movie recaps position in the form of a Christmas pageant. Kids who get up in front of whole schools and say they don't like Christmas aren't fine, Sarah. What if the kid was Jewish and hated having their winter holiday overshadowed? Seems like there might be at least a couple of exceptions to this rule. Let's invite Adriana's dad, too. Forced integration of new characters for the purpose of being able to make the same movie you made the first time without completely undoing the resolution of the first movie cliche. A together Christmas like a normal family! Implying separated families aren't normal. Hello? Grandpa Kurt? Forced integration of new characters for the purpose of being able... Wait, didn't we just do this So shut your fat hole! Hole shaming. I mean body shaming. Dear God. He's not. What the hell was that? Was that supposed to be a wink? Play it again. <laughs> that may be the worst wink in the history of cinema. The fact that the movies think these women would be anything other than creeped out and maybe a little worried that this man was having a stroke from that wink is pure lunacy. Show it again. <laughs> and now we meet Brad's dad, who, of course, is just like an aged version of Brad, because God forbid the movie decide to do anything unique or interesting. Four weeks. It's been a few years for us. If I had a nickel for every time Mel Gibson played a father to Mark Wahlberg and they didn't get along in a movie, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but weird that it's happened twice, right? You piloted the space shuttle Atlantis in 92 and commanded the Endeavor on three missions in 94. Listing someone's Wikipedia page to them as if you're in a movie and trying to get some quick exposition out of... Oh, I get it now. Looks like one of your neighbors is getting an oversized parcel. Indeed, but considering the postal worker didn't even have it out yet when you pulled in, the only way you could know this with any certainty is through some sort of USPS ESP. Why does a duck have feathers? Why? To cover up his butt quack. But that doesn't make any sense. Feathers don't cover up sound, and ducks don't even really have a crack. So what's this butt quack referring to? Is it supposed to be a fart? No, ducks don't do that either. Stop speaking nonsense, Lithgow. Tell the kids from now on, it's El Padre. Thinking you can pull off El Padre while looking like the first hit on a photo search for racist Irish uncle. Really? <laughs> Brad, thank you. Stop it. Now. This Dusty tries to stop Brad from cryings on for all the some time. On the sixth day till Christmas, the movie gave to me titles that are unnecessary. Already warmed up a spot in the capsule for you, Captain. Gross. Nobody sees this. Uncle Thomas went tiptoeing into the Empire State Building. Movie has another 70 minutes left and never gives us any resolution to the Uncle Thomas Empire State Building tiptoeing cliffhanger. You make a five hour trip go by like that? Five hours just passed in the film. And in real life, that period of time was just two minutes, even though it felt like five hours here too. Well, I guess I'm asking is, are we done yet? Stop putting children in love stories. There's enough couple culture pressure to go around in movies without turning it down to 11. You know, I think it's gonna be time to give him a talk. He's been in school for what, five or six years now? I'm pretty sure you're late. He's got flashcards to teach your son how to score. Thinking sex education is limited to nothing more than teaching a teen boy how to have sex with as many women as possible. Hey, honey, how do you turn the shower on? Shower on. Voice activated technology without a wake word. Also, Brad will now fight against every instinct in the history of human evolution just to stand in the shower getting drenched for the next 20 seconds instead of getting the f 
out after the first drop. You scored on yourself, friendly fire. Friendly fire, sir? Did you have to bring war into it? That's dark. You know the phrase own goal exists, right? For instance, this movie tries so hard to milk its jokes that they quickly turn tiresome and become an own goal. I don't know if they intentionally blocked the scene so that Will Ferrell would have antlers, but I kind of think it's hilarious, so I'm actually now positive it was a complete accident. But the only person who can ruin your Christmas is looking back at you from that mirror. That completely normal located in the middle of the room support beam mirror that is the exact place most people would put a mirror. You're the only one who can ruin your Christmas. Victim blaming. Well, the movie will now act as if the issue here is that the candy cane got stuck in her hair. But the issue is tapping someone with the wet end of the candy cane that just came out of your mouth. Anywhere, for any reason, ever. Also, if the candy cane pulled off that much hair, Sarah might want to switch shampoos or take vitamins to help prevent that kind of breakage. This lawsuit waiting to happen. <laughs> Infringing on the trademark of one Nelson Mandela months. All this never stopping, no auto shutdown, snowblower eating Christmas lights bullshit. Look what you did to the side of my car, man. Also, you know, the Airbnb. Speaking of which, in what world are you responsible for snow blowing the drive of an Airbnb you're renting? Did somebody fiddle with the thermos? Yes, it's 85 degrees. It's not 85 degrees. It was set to 85 degrees. When you adjusted it, it was only 76 degrees. Liar. This movie's assumption that all men apparently sleep in a t-shirt and boxer shorts. Wearing socks to bed. I just, I don't get the whole girls thing. I know, kid. Lena Dunham can be a lot. But I think the idea was that she wanted to create a show that allowed the female experience to be defined by something other than the typical male-dominated cultural view. So through the satire of a group of young women, she found a way to... Wait, I may have misunderstood. You know, boys have a... a dingle, right? And girls have a hoo-hoo or a right. whim-wham. Refusing to say the words penis and vagina. This may shock you, but if you normalize those terms, then growing kids will find they can discuss their issues and questions a lot easier. It also gives abuse victims who may not be able to describe how they're being hurt the vocabulary to out their abusers and prevent more harm. Now let's just cut it with a stupid name for basic anatomy, okay? It's called the friend zone. It's where we Whitaker men thrive. So to be clear, the humor here is that Brad is a schmuck because he's good at being friends with women instead of seeing them as a conquest. Just making sure I know what I'm supposed to be learning. You want to prepare yourself with like a mixtape of sad songs. Anything from Chicago. It's usually pretty good. Not specifying the band Chicago and not the musical Chicago. I'm just saying if this kid later soothes himself with when you're good to mama, don't come running to me. A mistletoe as you take it. You walk right up to her, you dangle this over her head. And then you slap your spaghetti suckers right on it. There's so much wrong with those two sentences from ignoring consent to the words spaghetti suckers that I can't address it all with the time I have in this video. So I'm just gonna add 50 sins and try to remember the scene where you get disemboweled in Braveheart. You wanna be like Brad and be in the friend zone? You wanna be like Dad and get in the end zone? It's like this movie is actively trying to disgust me in all the ways possible. We're gonna cut off the top 25 feet and chop the rest up for firewood, Don. Well, I hope you don't intend to immediately use that firewood because it's all wet and covered in snow. This is why you order firewood in advance. Take six months for the wood to properly dry after you chop it. I just wanted to give out fruit roll-ups, and what's the big deal? The big deal is that fruit by the foot is much easier to peel and eat. It's like you've never paper-fruited before. No bars. No bars. <laughs> My reaction every time I enter a dry county somehow makes its way to the script. That's why you want to crap all over it. Yeah. Well. <gasps> what the f*** just happened there? Did they just use an invisible defibrillator through his clothing to bring him back? It literally had the sound of a defibrillator firing and there isn't even one in the scene. Am I hallucinating now? I got it. Whoa. It's weird. And impossible. And dumb. This lamp is not lit or plugged as he connects the tree cord, but in the next shot, it's apparently lit and plugged. And I'm sitting here just wishing I were being lit and plugged instead of watching this mess. Dad, we're lighting the tree. You are not. The tree is already lit. Stop lying. Now, Brad, don't make eye contact with the alpha wolf. Continuing to further debunk science by using the term alpha wolf. There's no such thing. Hut! Hurt! Are you saying hot or hurt? Just because words are one letter apart does not mean they sound alike. At least that's what my Uncle Funkface used to tell me. What do you mean, used to sleep with Jenny? Linda Cardellini's entire role in this movie is to occasionally be the one that picks up on Don's obvious secret and also is a bit intimidated by the other underwritten female character in the movie every 30 minutes or so. I talked her down from the high 80s. Calling 85 the high 80s. Did you make TT in bed? TT in bed is somehow five times worse than just saying wet the bed, and I'm adding five sins for it. How would I pee upwards? Because your penis was pointing in that direction? Honestly, you can pretty much pee in any direction you want, Brad. Do you mind? 
Bowler's etiquette. Pretending there's any etiquette in bowling. This is an activity you do when you need somewhere to dump the kids for a couple hours while you drink disgusting warm beer. Don't try to elevate it with so-called etiquette. When he's up there with the tears and I suck at everything business, that's on you, Mr. School of Hard Knocks. Hey, better than him living in your basement in 20 years, Mr. Sissy Rails. Here's what counts as dramatic tension in this movie. Come on, buddy, give it another shot. Saying something stupid like this instead of giving your son a couple of pointers, like keeping his wrist straight. He'll suck a little less if you invest a bit of time to teach him how to be better. Hey, everybody, check it out. This kid's about to bowl perfect zero. This entire bowling alley will now gather around to see if he bowls a perfect zero instead of to see if there will be two perfect 300s on the same lane. Yeah! We will now all celebrate the wisdom of the man who started all this by calling his grandson a sissy. Sometimes a shop lifts a little bit. It's exciting. And they said there weren't any good female roles in Hollywood. If this scene doesn't end with the men giving Santa lap dances while drinking liquor straight from the bottle like in Bad Mom's Christmas, then I'm adding 10 cents for making me remember Bad Mom's Christmas without any actual payoff. I'll do it. I'll kill the turkey. This works. Turkey, turkey, turkey. What the f just happened? One second I'm looking at a little girl on Santa's lap and the next the scene transitioned with an effect that even Pawn Stars would think is a bit much. Did you edit this film in Windows Movie Maker? Is it a middle school film project for school you made with your buddies? My chiropractor would like to thank you for the constant whiplash. Let's name it. She's not gonna kill it if it has a name. Anthropomorphic psychological warfare. I don't know who this child is. Forgetfulness. Is that a scoff? I didn't scoff. Yeah, I heard you scoff just then. Can we just be done with the toxic dadulinity plotline already? I scoff. It was me who scoffed. I am the one who scoffs. When that gun went off, I thought you were gone. Man, I wish. But you might want to burden yourself before you bust that freaking machine. Apparently that machine is already busted because it's beeping around four times a second, but only reads 110 beats per minute instead of the 240 BPMs that the noise rate would indicate. Also, hospitals don't often leave the telemetry noises up on patients that aren't in the ICU. Gosh, it smells like a bullfight. Knowing what a bullfight smells like. He's got tiny little girl arms. T-Rex insults. Any paleontologist will tell you those velociraptors were ruthless misogynists. No canoodling until the divorce is finalized. Referring to sex as canoodling, just say f***ing. And sure, we just censored the word f but I still said it. It counts. I, I want our Sunday brunches at the, at the Cracker Barrel. If you regularly force your wife to eat at Cracker Barrel, I'm beginning to see where things might have started going south. Why is he using my mom's real name? Because the script wanted to take a shot at being about something real in a world where you chainsaw down cell towers, have light eating snowblowers, and it takes you this long to see your dad is in this much pain? I'm not part of this, okay? Thing Will Ferrell said before Paramount showed him the contract for the sequel he signed while drunk at their Christmas party somehow makes it into the script. A guy your age either joins an improv group because his wife left him or his wife left it because he joined an improv group. That's improvist. Sorry. Yes, and that's improvist. The set designer said, put a platter of apples in the background and it'll make them look like more of a family of assholes, if that's even plausible. Jeez, Megan, the rapscallion here has picked up a fervent love of guns and booze in less than a week. She's a couch on the porch short of hitting for what the locals call the full Kentucky. Maybe it was your fault. Were you a difficult baby? All babies are inherently difficult. Toddlers too. And kids, just young humans in general. Why do you think we send them so often? The only thing we send more than kids is apples. Driverless vehicles. Shut, shut up. up. Hey, you shut you up. You shut up. No, you shut up. I believe the word you're looking for is skip. Hey, five more minutes and I get to be Joseph. You want to be the original absentee father? Dude dips out of the story first chance he gets. It's like, hey, we left our son at the temple for three days. Oh, wait, where's Joseph? Gone. Four whole books of Jesus and his mother and all the authors lose track of Joseph. What, did he run over to Nineveh to pick up a pack of cigarettes and never come back? I'm sorry, I had a lot of B material left over from when my local VBS invited me to do stand-up. Since I wasn't invited back the next year, I had to use them somewhere. Not the right type to play Jesus' dad, Brad. He wasn't Jesus' dad, he was Jesus' stepdad. Brad would be excellent at parthenogenesis sins. You always assume she's the bad influence. Maybe your daughter play my daughter with alcohol. They're obviously pretending to be drunk. These kids aren't vomiting enough for them to have realistically had rum. And they aren't belting Piano Man at the top of their lungs. It's definitely fake intoxication. Joseph and the innkeeper rumble outside the manger. Well, that certainly would have kept my attention during the sermon when I was a kid. But no, we had to spend hours upon hours in 1 Corinthians. But just know the way I really feel about you is you can suck a fart, Dusty. A wet greasy fart. But at some point, doesn't the grease and moisture end up making it slip out of the fart category? Your words are important, Brad. I get that everyone is engaging in the ever important third act conflict cliche, but focusing on Dylan and Adriana forlornly waving goodbye to each other is both confusing and pointless. Since when were these two the faint heartbeat of this movie that barely has a pulse?
Crap, this is all leading to a terrible joke reveal later, isn't it? Avalanche, hit the highway up ahead. As it was falling, an onlooker swears he heard it shout, the script made me do it for convenient story purposes. But I'm guessing that witnesses must have been drunk. Anywho, I'm gonna need you to head back and resolve the 13 different storylines that are still hanging in a meaningful and satisfying way in the next 10 minutes. Good luck. I oh, know. Everything's sold out. If by everything you mean four shows have some afternoon sellouts and four shows don't have a single sold out time at all, note, I do not believe you meant this. It's Liam Neeson. He's a tow truck driver who's on his way home for Christmas. Movie accidentally inspires the ice road. You did, you did it, Daddy. Daddy. You killed them all. No kids. We did it. We killed them all. I'm not watching all the movie Mistletoe in this scene. The DOT wants everybody to stay inside and off the roads. And why would the DOT communicate that to a minimum wage movie theater employee? Shouldn't a state trooper be delivering this information? Brad's turning you into something that I'm not a good dad. That whole speech was in the movie we just saw. Was it? Yeah, word for word. The movie had a character named Brad? That's incredivenient. You guys got stuck here too? Yeah. And Dylan, look who else got stuck. Your girlfriend. This theater is like the Russian nesting doll of convenient arrivals. Now go in there and pick up that spare. Referring to a little girl as a spare to be picked up. We're gonna settle this physically, like men. Assuming women never settle anything physically. Did you not watch Orange is the New Black? Look at that smile, she likes him. Yeah, she wants a kiss. Reading this much into a smile, it's a smile. Sometimes it just means someone is glad to see you. Sometimes it means they're covering up an insecurity. Sometimes it means they just remembered that one time their friend Roger thought they had created a new type of grilled cheese sandwich by using tortillas instead of bread, only to later realize he'd accidentally reinvented the quesadilla. It's me, I, I'm Roger. There's less setup attempted here for this surprise kiss than it takes to microwave a burrito. Oh my God, he kissed his sister. So did Luke, and he turned out all right, at least until Disney got a hold of him. I love her, so that means I love you too. The word love is just vague enough in the English language for this statement to possibly be true on some level, but I feel obliged to send the idea that you are ever required to love the people around the people you love. Use your limited energy where it helps the most, and sometimes that's not on your stepdaughter's asshole, Dad. Brad is now singing an impromptu version of Do They Know It's Christmas that is immediately given a full arrangement by the choral vocalists, and it solves all the problems of blended families, and this movie can go f right off the edge of Mount Rainier. He came to the movies alone on Christmas, and that's a little sad. God forbid people enjoying their independence and ability to be happy with themselves. Oh my god! She's basing a character on me! Not since Cassandra learned Varric put her in his book have I seen someone so excited to know they'd be included in someone else's novel. Thinking I won't notice, this is from the exact same shot as earlier in the movie, just because you reversed the image. I notice everything. Sully Sullenberg. The guy who saved 155 passengers on the Miracle on the Hudson. Abusing a national hero by putting him in this mess of a movie. That's worth at least 155 cents. You only have one good story! My father has a million! And with this sequel and the original, this franchise now has a total of zero. <laughs> Bowling puns. Scared of the swings. I bet you feel pretty silly. Ah! All right, so I'm 12 years old, and I joined the Glee Club. <laughs> Glee Club. Glee Club is cool. Hello, Andre! Hello, Andre! Look, look at it! Y'all wanna see a dead body? Ah, bathtub eggnog. Just the way Grandma used to drink. Where are you? I don't know. Are you hurt? I'm still alive, but I'm very badly injured. I, I just want you to fully understand what you're asking for. To take a gun into the wilderness? You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Pancakes, bitches! Too early for flapjacks? Go ahead, Roger. Brad was right the first time. You're not worth it. Done. Done. Sorry. Sorry. From now on, I don't want you anywhere near my daughter. I don't want anything to do with any of you people. What do you mean, you people? 